Hi, and welcome to Outline Fast with Ann Kimbrough. I'm Ann Kimbrough. <laughs> and um, here's a few things I've got going on. As a creator, I have looked at many avenues and um, work in several still. As a screenwriter, producer, um, I do have several pen names, but the one I'm focusing on right now is Anne Audrey for a cozy mystery series called Fit Girls. I've also recently gotten into podcasting, which uh, they have something called audio dramas, which are very much like uh, old radio shows. Not that any of us remember those, but we know about them and they exist now. Um, some, some very popular ones have become TV series like Homecoming on Netflix. So I'm doing a, a sort of a YA fantasy called Lyric, A Mother of a Fairy Tale. And um, I'm always looking for different ways to practice with my uh, writing chops and producing. Um, doing my own books and podcasting allows me to take care of everything. And it's kind of fun when uh, most of the time you're used to just being a screenwriter. So one of the things that is probably the most important to talk about with outlining is why you need to outline. <laughs> um, you, you would think everybody would know this, but uh, like I said, I write books too. Novelists, oh, you run into novelists. The majority of novelists that I've spoken with do not like to outline. They like to wing it. I honestly think they probably do have an idea of where their story is going, but you know, in, screen, in screenwriting, you just do not have that luxury at all. It's, it's probably one of the biggest skills. I mean, I guess all the screenwriting skills are important. But if you can't outline, and more importantly, I have not put it on this list. If you cannot write a screenplay based on an outline that has been approved by your producer and director and possibly the talent... Um, you're not going to succeed. You're going to make everybody unhappy. And of course, that's the last thing you want to do to if you want to be a working screenwriter. So, you know, um, it's great. It's wonderful to have spec scripts. But usually what those are used for are writing samples to get you a job writing what a producer or a studio wants. <laughs> you might not even come up with a concept. You might totally build it out and create the whole world of characters, but they might give you a concept and they're going to give you some ideas of where they want it to go. But pretty much you're, you're starting from scratch and you're going to have to come up with an outline that everybody can read and understand and approve so that you can then keep writing and do the first draft of the script. Um, a very common thing in Hollywood is called a step deal and a step deal is just basically what it sounds like, you get paid in steps. And one of the steps, obviously the first step is that you get an upfront bulk of money. <laughs> the higher up you are on the chain, the bigger the project is, the bigger the budget, the more money you'll get up front. But you get paid something up front, but then the next payment is going to be for that outline and the approval of your outline. And then another step after that is, you know, the first draft, then it's uh, rewrites, polish. And of course, there can be many other different little steps along the way. But those are the basic ones. And the most important first one, um, as far as getting extra pay after your initial acceptance and getting on the deal, is the outline. And if you can't nail that outline, uh, then it all goes away. Uh, um, you know, steps aren't guaranteed. They're kind of like benchmarks that you're doing what the people that have hired you to do, um, you know, that they're happy that you were doing it correctly and they're pleased and you're moving forward toward production, which, you know, that's what everybody wants. So if you can't outline, <laughs> you're going to have a hard time getting past that deal uh, that step in the deal and, you know, being a working screenwriter that everybody wants to write with and work with. So um, the whole point of the outline for everyone is so they can see the script and that you don't go away and write a whole draft that they then hate and want you to rewrite. You know, it's far easier to change things at the outline stage. 
So to be a successful screenwriter, you need to be a successful outliner. <laughs> and hopefully I'm preaching to the choir here and that you already know this. And that's, that's why you're here, to find a fast way to outline. So let's get to uh, a few basics. Um, the gurus of screenwriting, which of course, they also include outlining. Um, the very first was Lou Hunter. Um, he, he has a book, Screenwriting 434. He used to teach, I want to say UCLA. Uh, he was kind of like the first guy that came from the industry and started teaching it also. Uh, Well-respected, unfortunately not with us any longer. But uh, I, I remember stumbling upon this book early on and it, it made me think about screenwriting. Like, wow, this is cool. So his whole thing was situation, consequences, conclusion. That was how you think about a script. That's how you outline. Of course, he taught a lot more. He's kind of, if you ask me, he's the founding father. Then you probably would have heard of Sid Field. Now, um, from Sid Field on, I have met and listened to all these people speak. Uh, luckily, there were a lot of really great conferences back when I was starting out. And all these people were... We're, everybody was kind of new. <laughs> in a way, it was like the first time people got out and went to Screenwriting Expo and things like that. And all the top people were there. I, I heard Blake Snyder speak just before Save the Cat hit huge and was the, the thing everybody was reading and everybody was using the terminology in Hollywood. So, but Sid Field was first and he's still the best in many ways because he created um, the paradigm, the screenwriting paradigm, that it's that graph. And it's the basic three act structure. He was the one that had the inciting incident, the plot points, which you might also want to call turning points, the midpoint, and then he also had pinches. Um, great. All his stuff is great. Uh, this is the basics of screenwriting and um, you should know it. <laughs> he coined a lot of the terminology. I don't know if he created it, but he was the one that put it out there and made it something that that's part of the lingo we use as screenwriters. Then came along Blake Snyder, the sweetest guy ever, and with Save the Cat. And he was a working screenwriter and he and his partners just had their own way of talking. Uh, that made a little bit more sense to them. Um, I liked, uh, I like a lot of what he says. Uh, uh, if you have Save the Cat, which you should have all these books, uh, page 70 is where he has the Blake Snyder beat sheet. And it's, let's see, I got it right here. It's 15 points that you should figure out. And it's a basic outline. Um, theme stated and all is lost are some of the terms he coined, uh, as many others on the list, excuse me. And, um, I, I would say that Blake Snyder's, um, beat sheet is really a great way to outline the beginning of a script. Um, but it's, it's very useful. Great book. Um, Chris Soth d does the million dollar screenwriting book, um, the mini movie method. You might have heard this is also sequences. Um, there, it's been sequences have been, has been taught at film schools for a long time. But Chris, uh, who is a cool guy and a good friend, yeah, he he just made it. Uh, he took sequences and made it easy to use and understandable. And um, his method is a really fast way to outline. Uh, basically, he breaks down movies into eight sequences or eight little mini movies. And each one of those has a beginning, middle and end. And when told all together, they, um, they give you a really solid script. Uh, so uh, I love Chris and I love his method. It's very useful. And then you have Jeffrey Kitchens. Uh, Kitchen, sorry. Um, he... I saw him and it kind of blew my mind because I feel like he had the best way to outline act three because many times when you outline, um, you know, they always say, if you have a third act problem, you really have a first act problem. And it's true because we seem to outline act one the most and outline act two uh, more than act three, but act three is kind of like, uh, it's it's more loosely outlined because as you write your first draft, it can change stuff at the end. So a loosely outlined Act 3 is smart. It's a good way to go. 
But Jeff Kitchen gave uh, an idea of where you start with the very last scene. You figure out what that last scene is. And then you work backwards to say what would have caused that last scene. And that, of course, is then would have to be the scene before it. So it's a very much a cause and effect kind of uh, way to plot. And it's a great way um, to work on Act 3. I, I mean, I personally uh, haven't been great at doing it for a whole script, um, just because I don't think my brain thinks that way. But it's a cool technique and one well worth learning how to use. All right, let's see what it all means to you. <laughs> um, which is why you're here. Uh, so what I found over the years is that I learned from all these gurus how they outline. And when I would sit down to write, I would remind myself during the outline phase, I would have some cheat sheets in a way of like, oh yeah, look at Blake Snyder's page 70, answer those questions, remember the paradigm chart, uh, look at my act three last scene, like Jeff Kitchen said, and then sort of do an overview to see, hey, do I got my mini movies? Are all the, what, where are the, what scenes are working together as a sequence to make uh, all the mini movies in my eye and my plot. And after a while, you're going to start, or I at least did, and you will too, you start integrating all those skills you've learned into your own uh, outlining method that works for you. I mean, the basics, of course, are always a story has a beginning, a middle and end. <laughs> and sometimes you can just sit down and start with that. Because ultimately, I, I believe you start with your, your concept. Concept's king. So you've got to have that hook. Some really amazing hook that is the core base of your whole screenplay. And you then have to break that down into a beginning, middle and end. And that's why screenwriting is great. Somebody could have, I mean, just even writing is great because people can have similar ideas, but we're going to all approach them in a different way and break them down differently. There's many ways you could start something. Um, but this is where it all comes together is that as you learn how other people outline, you figure out what shorthand will work best with you until the point that you don't have to look at somebody else's way of doing it. You just have created your own second nature outlining way that you naturally start doing it. I mean, now when I sit down to outline a brand new screenplay, I, I don't go back to Blake Snyder and, and answer the questions, I'll answer the 12 questions or the 12 points on his page 70 beat sheet. I don't have to do that anymore because what worked with what he taught is now part of me, just like all those other gurus. And the same thing will happen to you. You know, it's really great to ask other people how you write, how you go about it. And over time, you'll just, you just accept and, and build your own way to outline. So as long as you need to refer back to how others do it and and just know you will find your own way. So I'm going to go into how I do it. <laughs> or some of the things I think about when I'm outlining. And I didn't create any of these. Outlining kind of goes back to the Greeks. But um, I, do use, I do use them all the time. So I, I want to give credit where credit is due. Um, so here's how I outline fast. Like I said, I always start with my concept and how I can break that down into a beginning, middle, and end. Um, sometimes, I can remember, I don't even know what teacher this was, somewhere in college, somebody said that your first instinct is going to be the most common. Um, so uh, the way I took that to mean is that, yeah, write down your first instinct of what should be your beginning and middle and end, where the story should start, where the concept could go, but don't just stay there. Think it over through, look at it from different angles, different point of views. Do you have the right protagonist? You know, a lot of stories, I mean, M. Like M. Night Shyamala is like a great example that he wrote all of, oh God, what was the name of the movie? Now I can't remember. 
I see dead people. He wrote all of that until he realized that the psychiatrist played by, played by Bruce Willis was dead. So, you know, sometimes it takes a little while to find your story. So don't be afraid to start somewhere because starting is good. <laughs> but be open to where that, uh, where that could take you. Um, another common way to structure uh, a screenplay is to have bookend scenes. So like bookends on a shelf that hold together all your scenes, you have scenes that are similar. They mirror each other. So your opening scene and your ending scene would look alike, but obviously things have changed by the time you get to that end scene. So that's, that's a good way to look at a script to start it. So you have a starting point and you have an ending point. Um, it just sort of helps to make the two connect. And it's something that's done, something that's uh, something you'll see if you start watching films, which you should. You should watch films, especially films in your genre, and you should plot them. Plot the main, the big plot points while you're watching them and um, see what where they fall on, on any of these gurus' uh, lists of how to outline. I would also uh, highly look at, obviously, Blake Snyder's Save the Cat, page 70, exactly, specifically, um, because I, I feel like his 12 points really mostly outline act one. Obviously, they stretch into act two and even act three, but they're heavily into act one. If you can have something that applies to each one of the 12 points, your act one will be really solid. And then I would also look at that cause and effect uh, backward structure that Jeff Kitchen does to, to get a pretty solid act three. And, and that requires you to have that end scene, which maybe you figured out from your bookend. And to then say, what caused, that, what caused that scene to happen? And then that's the scene just before it. And then you go, what caused that to happen? And then that's the scene just before it. Then another thing that is really common to look at when you're outlining is the midpoint of your story, of the protagonist's story. Um, there's this common held belief that whatever kind of scene the midpoint is, whether it's a up positive scene or a negative scene, a down scene for your protagonist, that then your second act turning point is the opposite. So standard, uh, like most films that you see will have a, a positive midpoint and it's usually considered a false wind so that you're, your protagonist thinks things are going really good. It's a good moment, but it's the last good moment. So in many ways, it's it's a false win. So that the second act turning point is always uh, a bad thing. It, you know, things <laughs> change drastically and not in a good way, which um, most of the time, that is what we're used to. Um, obviously, switch it up. Nothing wrong with that. But sometimes... Um, Sometimes it's good to start until you uh, get a little bit more advanced with your plotting. It's good to start with the standard way that most films are made because then it'll feel right. Someone won't read it and go, God, something was just off. Well, it's because you know, I was trying something new, man. But um, so consider that. It's good to look at these points. And, and, and that, I guess, is the point of outlining fast is to hit the big things. And here's a real breakdown of it. So this is a beat sheet. Now, beat sheets are a way to outline. And uh, I'll get into it next about all the all the different kind of names you have for outlines. But I'm going to call this a beat sheet. And if you can, this is, a beat sheet breaks down your script by scenes. And these 12, which isn't it interesting that I also had 12. Oh, no. Blake Schneider had 15. Sorry. <laughs> But these 12, if you can figure out these 12 scenes, they are, they will give you the arc of your screenplay. And then you basically fill in the gaps between them. <laughs> so you have your opening scene and we always need to see the protagonist in their regular life. What, what is their regular, their normal world is like. Then you have the inciting incident that we learned from Sidfield. So that's the thing that basically 
starts the story. You know, that's the spark. I mean, you, you don't want to last long. You don't want to linger long in their normal world. And sometimes you, the normal world and the inciting incident can all be in the same scene. I often compress this stuff. You know, this isn't like hours. You know that. But this isn't scenes and scenes. This is either one scene or two all together. Um, so the inciting incident is that spark, that call to adventure, it's also called. And then that will lead you into how they react, how your characters react to the inciting incident. That'll lead into the first act turning point. Now, a first act turning point um, means exactly what it says, which you probably already know this, is that your character, your main character's life turns upside down. I mean, we need to see a major upheaval. Like, you know, if they were going off to college, well, now they're enlisting in the war. <laughs> you know, it's got to be a big change. Something big has changed in their life. And that's the end of Act 1. And you're getting into Act 2. So um, I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. But so when, you know, we're, we're working on a three-act structure, which, uh, um, spoilers, is really a four-act structure. But I'll talk about that later. Um, so when you get to... Uh, after Act 1, when you get into it, the, the your protagonist is always going to try to solve their problem. That's basically what Act 2 is about, is your protagonist solving whatever that, that spark is, that adventure, that problem that turns the point in Act 1. And they're always going to do the easiest thing first, because that's human nature. That's what we all want to do. What's the easiest way? So, like, if I could solve the problem, doing the simplest, easiest thing right now, uh, what would that be? And that's what your characters need to be thinking, especially, of course, your main character. Of course, they fail. <laughs> so then that is going to lead to another point of what do they do after that? And it gets more complicated, right? Leading up to your midpoint. Um, so your midpoint, like I talked about, should be a false win. Um, sometimes if there's a relationship angle in your story, this can also be where the sex scene is or the kiss it's just been known for that to happen. But that depends on your genre. Then we get into the latter part of Act 2, which Blake Schneider called um, the bad guys win. And it, it pretty much, this is where it's just going to start getting worse and worse for your main character and better and better for the bad guys until we get to the Act 2 turning point. Now, um, I didn't talk about Chris Vogler, the hero's journey. He also has a lot of great points in here. I personally just have never um, loved that as much as some of these other guys. So, But he's also classically great outline if you like it. <laughs> and there's a bunch of points that, that are hinged right in this area of the climax and all is lost. That all is lost is Snyder's, but it's also... Um, sorry, my phone's ringing. Um, is also part of, uh, of Vogler's uh, third act and plot points. So, but Blake Snyder, um, I kind of like how he referred to it a lot. Uh, he did have his all, all is lost moment. I believe the all is lost moment comes after some major upheaval that takes us from act two into act three, but before the climax scene. And in, um, in the hero's journey, uh, for me, they don't put it in the right place, but that's just a personal preference. So you should read that too and um, see what you think. But you have that all is lost moment where basically your main character wants to give up. It's important for every story because then they dig deep once again and that will lead you into your climax scene where pretty much everything that you have set up in the story has to come together uh, at one point and for one big m battle, whether it's a legitimate physical battle or a mental battle, but you're going to have that big cataclysmic moment in your script. And then your last scene. How do we end this? Where do you want to end it? So with this list of 12, this gives you all the points that your screenplay must have and then you go and um, you fill them in. <laughs> so after you have these 12 scenes, you um, you write to fill in the other scenes. You know, you are very much connecting the dots. Um, 
some of the ways to connect the dots obviously are just logical ways based on your story. I mean, this is where it gets very specific to what you're writing. Um, I used to know this TV writer named Larry Brody. He was excellent at outlining um, like a half hour TV show. He knew how to do it down to a science. He could do it for you in like two seconds flat. And he did it by obligatory scenes, which means depending on your genre, there are very set scenes that people expect. They, they are expected. I mean, if you're writing an action film, it should have a car chase, right? Um, you know, unless it's like John Wick and then it should have 50 car chases. But anyway, the point is, if you know your obligatory scenes, they have to be in the film or it's not going to feel like that kind of film. Um, you want to make it new and different, sure. But uh, you do still have to include things that we expect. I mean, in a mystery, if I don't have a dead body, um, that that's not much of a mystery, is it? <laughs> so um, find those obligatory scenes and fit them in to your the 12 scenes you already have. Um, one, a great way to do that, too, is once again, watching the favorite films that you know or the most popular films that you uh, know of in your genre and seeing what they've included and um, see how you can include something that's all yours but still answers that need for the genre to be that genre. Um, then you can also get into subplots. Obviously subplotting is huge. <laughs> There's always other characters and um, for me, the biggest flaw that people have in a subplot is they don't realize that the subplots are only there to highlight something in the protagonist, the main character's storyline. The main character has goals and desires and the subplots are only there to elevate them, to cause more problems, <laughs> to complicate and add conflict. And that's like the main thing I would say, what you fill in those 12 scenes with is con conflict. Uh, that is screenwriting, or I should say that is storytelling to a T. Plots need conflict. <laughs> you know this, um, but the, that's what you do to fill in. Um, somewhere along the line, I figured out that, cause I was, I write action thrillers. I figured out if I had 40 beats, so that's 40 scenes. If I could figure out 40 scenes that told the story, I knew it was enough that I could write those scenes and it would be a long enough screenplay. Now, of course, that totally has to do with how long you write your scenes. <laughs> but I'm just putting, out that, putting that out there as a rule of thumb. Uh, drama is always more. Drama, I just, it just, they talk more. So it just takes up more, more pages. Um, yeah, your number could be different than mine. Practice, practice this. But uh, if you can hit something close, if you're doing a beat sheet and you can hit something close to 40 beats, you should be in the ballpark. Um, it's always better to maybe have more because then you can edit out. I don't know. What, I, guess, I guess it'd be up to you. If you're, if you're not good at editing it out and you're better at adding, then go for less beats. <laughs> but practice and see what works for you. Um, these days, um, I always try to write my scripts to be about 90, 96 pages. Um, once upon a time, it was 100 to 120. Um, I don't know. I, 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 since I've gotten onto the producer side, shorter scripts that are solid and do everything you need them to do, they're much nicer when they're closer to 90 pages because they cost less, but they still do everything. So think about that. Once again, certain kind of scripts like dramas, maybe even fantasies or longer. Um, I didn't want to leave out TV scripts. Um, most hour dramas or a limited run series, you know, they're going to be an hour drama. They have a teaser in five acts. Uh, but uh, I believe Hallmark has like, I want to say eight acts. Anyway, once again, whatever you're whatever you're trying to fit, like what is your genre? Where, where are you trying to place it? If you want to put something on HBO, go watch several of their TV series and time them. Write down where you can see the act break breaks. It's harder on something that doesn't have commercials, but they're still there and you can, you can see them. Uh, 
whoops, I'm just jumping around without knowing it, knowing it. What was that last one? Oh, yeah, the good rule of thumb is that um, outlines are based on acts since everybody understands acts, even I mean, because we all have been trained that way, not just writers, just like everybody that watches anything, we understand acts. So let's do talk briefly about act structure. Um, feature length scripts, and frankly, um, well, let's just say feature length scripts because TV is different, are a three act structure. But it really is four acts because uh, because act two is longer. Act two is twice the size of act one. So it's it's hard to look at something that big and it's better to break it down. And, and mostly because act two does a lot so you want to break act two down in but I, I still but i still when i talk about acts i always talk about three act structure i just know and most people will feel the same way out there that there's an act 2a and there's an act 2b just something to know um for act one i usually try to be lean and mean at 20 pages or so none of these are hard and fast like you know you, if your story needs more it needs more but uh, 20 to 30 pages. Um, act two, uh, two A should be around 30 pages. Act two B is around 30 pages. What divides act two between A and B is your midpoint. And act two A is usually, uh, well, is mostly about your protagonist trying to solve their problem, you know, and they still have a lot of, you know, energy and uh, hope and, uh, they're hitting some obstacles, but they're keep, they keep trying and they really think they can succeed. But act, uh, but the midpoint is that turning point where act two B is about how it just keeps getting worse. And their hope that it's going to work out is going to be going down the drain. And that's once again, where, um, all is lost. The bad guys win. That's what you're on that path. You're on that flight plan <laughs> until you then hit the second act turning point, which once again needs to totally disrupt your uh, main character to the point where they really, they really do lose hope. And then act three, of course, is your shortest because, you know, um, the Greeks did this. They, you know, once they it, watch some old films too, they're in some ways they can be really hilarious how quickly they wrap stuff up. And you're just like, oh, what, what? could I handle just an inch more, <laughs> a little more story, please? They just like, hey, we hit the climax. It's done. Bye bye. Well, um, find a way to pace yourself. You, you do want to wrap it up. Uh, people don't like a, I don't know why, but uh, we don't linger too long once we've uh, blown the wad and shown our hand. So 15, 20 pages is uh, kind of standard. Oh, I did want to get back to other outlines because everybody has a different thing in mind when it comes to outlines and what to expect. So if someone says outline, if they say beat sheet, if they say treatment, even a one page, they can mean, they can mean the same thing. It's all interchangeable. Nobody, uh, there's no one universal thing you can say and everyone gets it. <laughs> so you always should ask always always unless this is just you writing your spec script at home um you know no one no one's input but just your amazing brain uh then fine but anybody else you're working with ask them what they expect when they ask for an outline and just get get yourself uh get you know let, get everyone on the same page so to speak about what you need to deliver and I will say that, you know, you know that no one reads in Hollywood. They all say they do. Actually, I met a manager recently that said she didn't. And I was like, wow, that's refreshing. Because everyone says they read, but they don't. <laughs> they show, they prove it all the time. And there's a lot of clues that people say they read and they don't. Usually if they talk about your script, they'll only talk about stuff that happens in act one. That's, that's a sign that they haven't read your whole script. Um, things like that. But the point is that, that means for an outline that shorter is usually better because people will read something short. Uh, they just don't want some like treatment. Uh, I think treatment is like a bad word to use because um, they don't mean it. They don't mean what is 
It was typically a treatment, which means pages and pages of stuff. No one, no one is going, wants to read pages and pages. They'd rather read something short. And if they have to read something, I think they'd rather read the script. And that's the end. <laughs> I really hope this is putting you on, put you on the path to understanding outlines a little bit more. Um, if you do want a little bit more help, I have over the years created stuff, uh, I have a website called Screenwriters Daily Dose. Um, there's not a lot of stuff about outlining there, just screenwriting in general, a lot of pitching stuff um, and blog links to good advice for screenwriters. If I find, I'll post it. But it does on that website, I do have a list for all my screenwriters beat shows, which is something I did a few years back uh, on YouTube. These were originally Google Hangouts. Do you remember those? They were very sketchy, kind of like uh, uh, the quality was sketchy, uh, of like Skype calls. Um, but it was free. And I think the content was really good. I got together um, several of my screenwriting friends and we were all pretty, pretty new. And we just, I, I mean, the, there's a lot of good information out there uh, now more than ever, but it's, it still tends to be mostly about A-listers and, you know, we're not all A-listers yet. So uh, I wanted some information out there that was about how you, how you break in and how you keep breaking in. Cause those first few years, it just seems like you, with every little option or success, you, you just you're still breaking in. <laughs> and um, this was a bunch of screenwriters just talking about our experience. So I, I think it still holds true. And two episodes were about outlines, episode 30 and episode 45. So if you want to know a little bit more about how a group of screenwriters, what we think about outlining, uh, you, you, you can check those out. They're on YouTube and the links are on screenwritersdailydose.com. Uh, one of the other things I've gotten into is audio dramas, which I definitely think if you haven't, if you don't know about them, you should find out about them because they're, they're like little scripts and they're like little radio shows, but, uh, now you can find them on iTunes. Um, I have podranger.com, uh, with some links. And then I've also started doing uh, a show on Twitch called Writers Write and it's weekly writing sprints. I do them every Monday and Friday if you want to join us. Um, and that's my website. So guys, I, I really hope you got something out of this and you're looking forward to your next outline because this is a skill that will make you a working screenwriter. I mean, uh, not everybody knows how to outline really well or to outline with people in the sense of bringing their ideas that they want to see, the producers, the directors, the talent, to incorporate those into an outline to show them what an amazing project and script you're going to write for them. That's a huge skill and it's a huge talent and not everybody's good at it. So, um, I challenge you to take the time to be good at it, good at it because you can, you can do this <laughs> and you can carry on the, the torch to pass the word that outlines are really important. And, uh, I hope you have fun, uh, working on this skill. Thanks for joining me today. Bye.